After watching movies such as Interstellar or any part of Back to the Future, we often ask ourselves only one question. Will humans ever be able to travel back in time? The vision of being able to step, in, step into, stepping into the machine, setting a few dials and going off into a bygone era seems just mind-boggling. My name is Alexander Kowalczyk and uh, I've been interested in the topic of time travel for a really long time. And thus, today, I will delve into this intricate realm, starting with the most basic physics theories, later moving to the paradoxes surrounding time travel. And finally, I'll answer the question. So let's start with the concept of time itself. We, uh, we all perceive time as a linear progression with each and every uh, moment following the other in a sequence. Uh, this perception of time as a linear, as an unchangeable and ir irreversible flow is deeply ingrained in our understanding of the universe. But what if we could manipulate this linear progression? Let's start our journey through time with one of the best physicists the world has ever seen, Albert Einstein. He fundamentally impacted our understanding of time in, <clears throat> in his works dedicated to the theory of relativity published in 1905. Uh, he, uh, he proposed a theory which, was, uh, which is the fundamental uh, part of any following theories and uh, which sparked the research of many scientists. The thing which he established is that time is not a constant but rather a relative and hence it is susceptible to changes uh, by factors such as gravity or velocity. It greatly impacted how we perceive time, uh, concept of time, as before Einstein it was simply thought to be unchangeable. In general, the Einstein's relativity theory is combined of the special relativity theory and the general relativity theory. According to the special re relativity theory, space and time are one entity and belong to one another. This is the so-called space-time and it implies that time is another dimension. Uh, and uh, the general difference between space and time is that whilst you can turn around in space, uh, you can't really do so in time. And according to this theory, in order to be able to travel back in time, you would have to achieve a speed greater than the speed of light, which would require an infinite amount of energy. Uh, and this theory is often depicted in this way. We have the hypersurface of the present, uh, with the x and y axis representing the space, and then we have the z axis representing the time. Uh, now, the future past and the present is limited by the speed of light, which, is essentially the, which are essentially the future light cone and the past light cone. And I think the majority of you probably know the equation E is equal to mc squared, and that's part of this uh, theory, and it essentially it describes the relationship between matter and energy. Now let's move to the general relativity theory. So uh, according to the general relativity theory, the space-time is also curved, and the curvature is proportional to the mass um, of an object, hence uh, the, cur the curvature is uh, easier to observe on the example of uh, massive celestial bodies and this curvature is also known as gravity uh, and even though the Einstein's theory of uh, theories of relativity do not forbid time travel uh, we just most probably don't know how to do it yet uh, however scientists came up with a few ideas uh, one of those ideas is uh, one of those ideas is traveling through time dilation. As you most, uh, I hope that most of you know uh, the movie Interstellar, which depicts this idea really well. Uh, in a short summary, uh, the, on the Miller's, the Miller's planet experienced extreme time dilation due to its proximity to a supermassive black hole uh, called Gargantua. And the time on the planet passed way slower than Earth, as with, our, as with each hour spent on the uh, Miller's planet around seven years passed on Earth. And in general, when talking about time dilation, we use the concept of uh, curved black holes, also known as rotating black holes, uh, because they warp the space and time to a higher extent than normal black holes. Uh, to a normal black holes, yes. Uh, and uh, these uh, black holes, for those of you who don't know, black holes are essentially places in space where the gravity pull is so strong that even the light cannot get out. And these massive celestial bodies, born from the remnants of massive stars, uh, exhibit an interesting phenomenon as they warp space and time to an extreme degree. As you approach the event horizon, which is the boundary beyond which escape is impossible, time itself becomes distorted. Uh, and uh, time uh, slows down to a crawl, essentially creating a, uh, a uh, barrier, essentially creating a pathway between the uh, known and the unknown, the present and the past. Uh, and uh, the only shortcoming of this theory is, 
is that uh, only traveling into the future would be possible and traveling back in time would not be an option. Uh, another theory or uh, another way of traveling in time is through the use of wormholes. Uh, these hypothetical passages foreseen by the Einstein's theory of uh, relativity are essentially shortcuts through space-time. We can all imagine bending the, uh, bending the, uh, the fabric of the universe uh, to connect two distant points in both space and time, potentially allowing us to revisit our own past and, uh, and see our uh, future. Here you can see a better visualization of it. And to truly grasp um, the significance of wormholes, we first have to understand their theoretical complexities. Uh, they, are intriguing, uh, they are intriguing warps in space-time uh, created by the immense gravitational forces of collapsed uh, stars and exotic matter. But tapping into this interstellar subway, interstellar, interstellar subway system is no small feat, as it requires us to overcome the questions of stability, immense energy requirements, and uh, the various mysteries which might be on the other side. The problem with wormholes, however, is that while the Einstein's general relativity theory predicts their existence, till this day we have not found any conclusive evidence of their presence. And furthermore, uh, they require negative energy to keep them open, which uh, to keep them open, uh, and we have to find a way to connect specific places in specific times to travel in time between uh, times we want and between places we want. Uh, and if we um, discover the secrets of wormholes, uh, and uh, then we might uh, that it might enable us to travel in time through closed time-like curves. Uh, those are hypothetical paths in uh, space-time that loop back upon themselves, uh, enabling us to revisit events from our own past. And while they are often associated with exotic, uh, exotic uh, scenarios such as cosmic strings or black holes, uh, they uh, challenge our very understanding of the concept of causality. Uh, imagine being able to interact with your past self and change the course of your own history. However, unlocking their secrets is no uh, small feat as it introduces us to discussions about uh, the uh, causality as well as the paradoxes which they may introduce. The existence of such structures is well within the Einstein's theory of uh, special relativity and unlike, uh, and unlike the case um, for uh, wormholes, we know that they may exist. Uh, the only problem is that um, as of right now, we don't know how to create um, every single configuration or the majority of the configurations in the real world. Uh, even if the intriguing ideas we've looked at thus far point to the possibility of time travel, uh, it's not without its shortcomings and challenges. The grandfather paradox is one, of among, one amongst the most well-known uh, time travel conundrums uh, and it poses a significant question. What would happen if you were to travel back in time and prevent your own grandfather from meeting your own, own grandmother? This seemingly innocuous interference creates a significant conundrum. As if you are successful in your mission of preventing your grandparents from getting together, the sequence of events uh, leading to your own birth would be disturbed. Uh, this essentially means that you may have never been born to begin the journey in the first place. Uh, the complex ideas of causation that time travel brings is highlighted by this dilemma, and moreover, it underlines that actions in the past may have ripple effects with uh, profound consequences. The bootstrap paradox is one of the most puzzling of them all. Let's say a time traveler uh, decides to send Shakespeare a copy of his, a copy of his own works. Uh, Shakespeare decided to publish those pieces and they eventually gain notoriety. Now think about it. Who can really be credited as the author of those works? Is it really Shakespeare? Uh, this paradox, the bootstrap paradox, uh, blurs the distinction between causes and their effects. Uh, by forcing us to consider the possibility that there may be some events without a clear point of origin. These causality paradoxes uh, can be removed by the introduction of the idea of parallel worlds, multiple timelines, or enforced consistency. Uh, those ideas are often uh, presented in movies uh, from the Marvel, uh, Marvel Universe, such as Spider-Man, and, uh, uh, and scientists actually came up with a few different solutions. One of them is the chronology protection conjecture, which provides a glimmer of optimism despite the challenges associated with time travel. Uh, uh, 
This theory was brought up by one of the best physicists of astrophysicists of the 21st century, Stephen Hawking. And uh, essentially uh, what he said is that the laws of physics themselves themselves might serve as a barrier preventing the creation of the so-called closed time-like curves which are the, those hypothetical pathways uh, in space-time that uh, as, previ as previously noted would enable us to travel back in time. Uh, this, conjecture, this conjecture suggests that uh, cosmos may have systems that actually prevent the creation of those structures or self-correct any disruptions brought about by time travel. The theoretical frameworks of general and special the general fr uh, the theoretical frameworks of general and special relativity brought to us by uh, Albert Einstein the, uh, have opened us to the possibility of time travel through time dilation and other methods such as wormholes. However, these theories, while groundbreaking, ground breaking, have yet to provide a practical pathway into uh, traveling in time, and many scientists still remain skeptical whether it actually is possible. Uh, moreover, there, there is also one um, particular uh, challenge associated with time travel, a practical one, which are the immense energy requirements it may entail, as uh, in the majority of the cases which we discussed today, uh, a huge amount of energy are, are demanded, and the, with the current state of the development of technology uh, on Earth, we simply are not able to obtain such levels. Um, so, coming back to the question from the beginning. Unfortunately, in the near future, the possibility of time travel uh, remains highly improbable. Uh, we continue to make strides in understanding uh, time travel and the nature of time, but the technical and theoretical hurdles are formidable. We are sure that traveling to the future is possible, but it's not the case for traveling back in times, and it may not be um, so obvious, and most probably we are yet to find it out in the upcoming years. In conclusion, the future um, of time travel is uncertain, but our relentless curiosity uh, and determination has led us to discover unimaginable truths about the universe. So one, I hope that one day some of you uh, will be able to build uh, time machines from old DeLoreans. Thank you.